booktube it's Andrea and I'm here today with my July wrap up which is going to uh, incorporate all the books I read in July including the books I did complete for booktubeathon unfortunately I didn't complete all seven reading challenges but I didn't do too badly considering I was on a late shift and I always suffer on those so we'll start with at the beginning of the month and then we'll do the booktubeathon books separately at the end. So the first book I read in July was Jackknife by Wani Lee, which is the first in the Cardiff Bay Investigation series. So basically Mark Wilson is throwing a Eurovision Song Contest party, but when his friends turn up, um, they, there's no sign of him and one of his neighbours goes into the house and sees his uh, bloodied and tortured bodies uh, on the kitchen uh, counter on the table. He's been brutally murdered and dismembered and basically um, DCI Martin Phelps and his team step in and try and solve the murder. Now I love this book because obviously living in South Wales, I live a few miles outside of Cardiff, I know a lot of the places mentioned in this book. So obviously Cardiff Bay is a very popular place and so I can I read some of the, the places like Albany Road and so on and I think oh yeah I know that place so you know but other than that it's a really good read a very nice a uh, very good story not so nice uh, with some very interesting twists and turns and I think I gave this four or five stars on Goodreads um yeah I would recommend it it's a good fun read obviously it's even more fun if you are from the Cardiff area you'll really enjoy it and that's published by Accent Press. The second book I read in July was Marilyn in Manhattan, Her Year of Joy by Elizabeth Winder, or Winder. This takes one year out of Marilyn's life and writes a comprehensive story about it, telling us about what she got up to, how she travelled there and why she was in New York. I gave this one four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. It's, I think it is quite hard to write a story, um, a comprehensive story about one year in a person's life. It's like a slice of lemon. Um, it, it wouldn't always make sense unless you know the protagonist however this was done extremely well and do look out for a full review on booktube as I will be filming one of those fairly shortly that one I really enjoyed the third book I read was a ebook and that was and we got a few of those now I've actually written them down properly this time so I know what they're about was Death Comes to Town these are, these are a series book by K.J. Emmerich um, and features Darcy Sweet. She runs a bookshop in Misty Hollow, but she also has a gift. She has a sixth sense. Ghosts talk to her and she can sense things that are going on. Um, basically, in this first story, her friend Anna is murdered and with her, with the new detective in town, John Tinker, and his partner, who is uh, uh, Darcy's sister, Grace, they set out to solve the murder of um, her next door neighbour and friend Anna and they do and it was a really enjoyable short story they weren't very long but they, oh, they, they were very very enjoyable I got, actually got the box set and I really enjoyed them all and in that there was actually a secondary story which was from the, her cat's point of view which I didn't read because I wasn't really bothered about that then um, I read the second in the series which is uh, Mists of the Past now this time Darcy's now boyfriend the detective John Tinker has a secret and when Darcy has a vision from his past she's left wondering if he could be a killer or not um, so she and John start to investigate the death of one of his friends who died a few years ago in mysterious circumstances um, and can they find out who actually killed this person was it suicide was it murder was it John was it not and they come to together and they solve that mystery and then the third book in the series is from the ashes and this one, in this one, a friend's mother apparently died in a fire many years ago. Um, and the daughter asks Darcy for help to find out what happened. However, Darcy cannot contact the mother. So she feels that the mother is actually alive. And she, the friend and John, set out to try and track the mother down and find out what happened. And they do. The next one is called The Ghost of Christmas. This was actually one of my favourite ones in the series, I'm not going to lie. So the ghost of a for former um, pageant Santa, every year in Misty Hollow they have a, a Christmas pageant, turns up on Darcy's doorstep saying he was murdered and he wants justice. The, the, the ghost's daughter thinks that he was, he was killed because the Santa suit was haunted and they actually start wondering if this is the case because John and Darcy end up playing Santa and Mrs Claus 
and there is an accident when he, on the sled when he's wearing the suit so they start to wonder could it be or could the killer be somebody closer to home so again I really enjoyed that one but I like anything Christmas the next one is called The Stolen Valentine and in this one Darcy's brother-in-law Aaron goes missing while trying to prepare a surprise Valentine's Day present for his wife Grace who's just found out she's pregnant. Um, what has happened to him? Is he still alive? Can they track him down? So that was in that one. And the final one that I read in the series was Hiding from Death and Darcy has a new neighbour and she has a secret. She is actually on the run. She is wanted for the murder of her husband um, a few years previously. Her husband disappeared and all that was left in the bed was a load of blood. Um, is he dead? Has he run away because he has mafia connections? And can Darcy get to the bottom of it and save this woman and her daughter? So I really enjoyed them. They're nice, fun, little cosy mysteries. Worth a read. You know, they're not. It's not Shakespeare. It's not Austen. But it's still a good, honest read, and I really enjoyed them. And the last book uh, ebook I read last month was *The Haunting of Winchester Mansion*, book zero by Alexandra Clark. Now, in this one, Bailey and Bodie Taylor buy and renovate properties and write a blog where they document their experiences. Um, so they buy a house in Black Bay. Um, a beautiful house but it has a tragic history in the fact that the whole family was killed in a boating accident however when they start the demolition and renovation of the property Bailey starts seeing and feeling strange experiences there is a ghost in the house and it wants something from Bailey um, but can they figure it out so this is book zero it's sort of like a prequel to the first book which I've also got but I haven't read yet even though it's a predates it so I think they probably read the, the first book and the second book were written first and then book zero came as a sort of prequel which explains how they bought the house and started getting the ghostly things now and uh, the last book i read before we got on to two book two bathon was the dark isle by claire carson this came out on the first of june and was published by head of zeus and this tells the story of sam who grew up in the shadow of a secret state her father was a undercover agent and he was killed in the line of duty. Sam is doing her archaeology PhD and she's studying um, the Vikings on Hoi in the Orkney Islands but this was also an island where her father used to take her when she was a child. They used to vacation there every year and she's trying to find out the truth of what happened. Um, was he a good spy or was he a bad person along with what happened to her friend, a childhood friend Anna and Anna's father Pierce. So it's a bit of a psychological thriller. It was very well written. I did enjoy it. This book was actually sent to me free by the publisher for a review. You can read my review on my blog and I will leave a link to that one down below if you want to but it was an interesting interesting book. Now we're on to book two-bathon. Out of the seven reading challenges I completed four. Like I said I was on late and I do find it difficult to, to read I'm, you know because I get very tired and I just want to go to sleep. So the first book I actually read was for the challenge um, read a hyped book and that was Caravel by Stephanie Garber. Now I really loved this. I read this in one day and it was I just really enjoy it you all know what it's about there was some hype about this earlier in the year some people loved it other people didn't think so much of it I personally really enjoyed it and judging by the last line there's going to be the, the last page which is another letter to Donatella uh, which says I plan on collecting my payment very soon yours truly a friend something tells me there's going to be a sequel to this book at some point and I am looking forward to that because I really enjoyed that I then completed the book, book, read a book in a day, which was for me Peter and Alice by John Logan. Again, it's a play, it's 70 pages, it's very short. Plays are very hard to rate. I did enjoy it, but I think it would be better to see it live. I think that would be really good. Um, very, very strange and very sad, but I really enjoyed it. I then read the book I bought because of the cover, and that was Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. When I first started reading this, I was a bit, oh, I don't know if this is me, the first chapter or so. But as the story progressed and we learned more about our main characters, um, I really, really enjoyed it. I started liking Amani as a character and Jin, and I really, really enjoyed it. I do have the sequel, which is Traitor to the Throne, so I'm looking forward to picking that one up as soon as I can. 
Oh, there we go. And the last book I picked up for Big Tubathon was The First Challenge, Read a Book with a Person on the Cover. And this was Asylum by John Harwood. Now, I saw this on Missy the Binge Reader's channel, thought it looked really good. I read it, it was good, but it wasn't as good as I hoped it would be. I was hoping for more spooky stuff, but saying that, once I got into it, it was very, very good. I actually have recommended this to a friend of mine at work and I will be giving this to her tomorrow so she can enjoy it too. So I didn't complete all the challenges. So read a book with a character not like yourself, The Black Dahlia by James Elroy. I've nearly finished that. So that will probably be the first book I finished in August. I didn't read outside at all just because the weather was really up and down over the week and the weekend and it just, just rained most of the week. And yeah, I'm not going to go and get my book wet. And I also didn't read the seventh book, which was um, my book uh, out of my TBR jar, which was Peter James. I can't remember what's called. One of the Need You Deads or Loves You Dead or Wants You Dead. He uses combinations of those words quite a lot with you dead in them, which for his Roy Grace series. But I will be picking that up as soon as I have finished The Black Dahlia because I want to read it. I also didn't finish my Stephen King book of the month, which was Wizard and Glass. I'm about a third of the way through it. It's huge. They just keep getting bigger and bigger. So I will be picking that one up again this month and trying to finish that along with starting um, Wolves of the Colour, which is even bigger. Though I have heard that once you get through Wizard and Glass, it picks the series picks up again. So although I haven't read my book, from the TBR jar. I am going to pick another one because there'll be books going in this at the end of the month. Because I said anything that I've bought that I haven't read within a year will go in the jar unless it's part of a series. So obviously Harry Potter not going in the jar. So let's see if we can pick something up that's not horrifically big and that's going to be quite big. Knowing me I'll pick that something like Crime and Punishment or Brothers Canimus of or something ridiculous or Rome by Emile Zola. So we have an orange one today. Do, 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 do. And this is, ooh, The Stranger by Harlan Coburn. Now, I like a good Harlan Coburn. He writes brilliant mysteries and thrillers. And, oh, they're a little bit on the strange side. So I'm going to enjoy that one. I'm going to pull that off the side and read that after I've read the Peter James book. So, yes, happy with Harlan Coburn. When we first started doing the jar, all the books I picked out of it were non-fiction. Sorry, were fiction. No, they were non-fiction. And now they all appear to be fiction. Yet there's still loads of non-fiction in that tub as well. I'm not putting non-fiction in there because I'm saving all my non-fiction for non-fiction November if we do that again. Olive, are we going to do that again? Because that was fun. So those are all the books I've read in July. And you know which ones I'm planning on reading in August. So we've got the Peter James book. We've got Harlan Coben, The Stranger, and we've also got uh, Wizard and Glass and The Walls of Cala by Stephen King. Have you read any of the books I've read this month? And if you did, what did you think of them? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you really enjoyed it. Share it with your friends. Leave me a comment. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, because I do appreciate every single one of you out there who do tend to, to tune in and listen to me blathering on about books or colouring or Marilyn or cameras or whatever. So I will see you soon, booktube. Just keep on reading. Bye now.